Hey, everybody. No, not that one. Um, we have some show and tell that's going to be happening in a few minutes. Uh, thank you for being with me right now. And um, I love when I see that we're reaching quilters all over the world. That makes my heart really happy. You know, back in the day of Simply Quilts, I mean, that was on like, what, 10 years or whatever? I mean, Gilligan's Island didn't last that long. Uh, I got a lot of drive-by quilting people started where they didn't know that they would love quilting and then they would see it on HGTV right after Carol Duvall and they got started. And, and that's probably one of the things I miss most about that show. Um, but what I never occurred to me by going to the internet with Ricky, never occurred to me that we would be reaching people worldwide. And I think that's just absolutely, hey Margo, I think that's absolutely fabulous. And like on Wednesday, uh, there was somebody from Israel and I could say happy Passover, you know, it's just, it's just great. You know, here we are, it is a holy week. It is a holy, holy week. We have, you know, the Jews celebrating Passover, the Christians Easter, and here we are all stuck at home. Please, please, please stay home and be safe. I know there are some um, religious things that are saying, yeah, you can come, blah, blah, blah. Please don't, stay home. I'm sure there'll be plenty on plenty of services on um, television, if not even your place of worship streaming live through your computer. So that's just my little PSA, please. Um, so the other thing I want to show you is uh, this week I was supposed to be at my girlfriend's house, Robin Maimoni, celebrating her um, her birthday. And some of her dear friends were going to be there, one including um, Cindy Needham. And uh, Cindy was going to come down from Chico and spend the night there. And she was going to leave a little goodie for us at our sewing machines. And because we're not, we're doing what we have to do. Um, I got this package yesterday and look what Cindy made each of us. Whoops. It's got a sailboat because she knows how much I love boats. It's got an A with a heart, a heart with an A. And I asked her for permission to use this pin cushion because it's from an old crazy quilt. Look, she even did some stitching on it, you guys. Whoop, like there, yeah. Um, and she said, yeah, and the reason I could use it, that's what it was intended for. And what I love so much about this is that when I look at it, it makes me think of my, my squad. I got a good squad. <laughs> um, so thank you, Cindy, publicly. I called Cindy uh, yesterday and we chit chatted for quite a while on the phone. And I'm strongly encouraging her to do what um, I'm doing here so that she can share her magic with you. I mean, like all of us professionals, all our gigs, gigs got canceled. And she said, I was supposed to be in Germany next week. So um, this what, kind of start stalking Cindy Needham. She um, is a great, great teacher, great teacher. I've talked about her already here. And, um, but better than being a great teacher, She's a lovely human being. Uh, somebody asked me last, or no, somebody asked um, after we were off on Wednesday, we were talking about silks. And yes, you can access these things on YouTube. You do not have to be on Facebook and, and or from the front page of thequiltshow.com. But they asked about what batting do I use with silk? Great question. I don't change my battings, uh, whether it's cotton, whether it's silk, whatever. Um, I could do a little bit on batting for a lesson. I'm not an expert at it, but I could do a little bit on that coming up if you're interested. Uh, primarily now, because I'm machine quilting, I'm using 100% or an 80-20. An so anyways, um, I think she just posted something. Hmm. Anyways, hi everybody. So um, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna talk about straight line quilting. And let me tell you how this even came about. And I am gonna need John, so he's got all the quilts in order and all that, but not yet, sweetheart. Um, we did a show with Jackie Gearing. It was show 1202. And if you're not familiar with her, she, to me, is one of the godmothers of modern quilts. And when I saw her quilts, I just, it, it just, huh. so, so Ricky 
got to host the section on how to make a wonky log cabin, um, or how to take a traditional log cabin and make it wonky and modern. And then I got her for the quilting section. And I have to tell you, this show was amazing. I, it literally changed both Ricky and myself for different reasons, but it did. And um, what she did was she demonstrated how striking striking results you can get with straight line quilting. And so um, I came home and I made two little samples. Uh, one is the sample that was on my face on my Facebook uh, talking about today's session. And it's very, very small. Um, but don't go too far, John. But I absolutely love this. I love it. I love it. Check out how in the in the um the binding whoops it's so weird i could never be a weatherman this is actually a flange in here that i've put in and note how i made a design decision even within the flange um to me every single thing you do gosh darn it i gotta go this way every single thing you do is a design decision even down to the binding well, I loved this little piece so much. Oh, and this is Hand Dyes by Sonia Lee Barrington. Um, I will tell you that story. Sorry, John. So um, Sonia has a look about her hand dyes that are just amazing. And um, she put out the word that she was going to um, stop doing it and she wanted to sell them she not stop quilting she was going in another direction like wools and silks and stuff like that and so I thought well I want to go buy some of her hand dyes so she lives in San Francisco not far from the beach in one of those old old wonderful houses and um, I went there and she had staged this fabric like nobody's business now driving over there I gave myself the budget sit down, of $1,000. Remember, I can write this stuff off. That's one great thing about being able to buy fabric when you're a professional teacher. Um, so I go in there and now I'm just having a heart attack because their stuff is so beautiful. And um, okay, so I start pulling, but Sonia is so sneaky because, you know, how, so I, I got about six or $700 worth. She shipped it to me so she'd have time to, you know, pack it and all that. And then I made a quilt and I started plowing through this stuff and um, I'm not going to sound like a very nice person by the end of this story just so you know you will be shattered with what I tell you <laughs> so so I so I was using up these fabrics and I was like freaking out so um, I, I called her and I said Sonia how much for all of it I want all of it and she said, okay, well, let me think about it. I, you know, add it up, do the math, blah, blah, blah. And she called me back the next day and she said $5,000. And I went and I told John and he said, you can't do that. And I said, mind your own business. He didn't divorce me. <laughs> so I bought him. And I will tell you, he probably was right. <laughs> But her stuff is beautiful, and I would not be able to get this result with any uh, store manufactured um, fabric. So anyways, uh, somebody commented on my Facebook about this piece. They said, I don't care what size this is, but I love this so much, I made a big version. So just simple graphics, straight line quilting, and whoops, I got to go this way. And there it is. And this was actually inspired by an old, old quilt. I had to get a star in it because that was in the old quilt. But John, if you can walk forward a little bit um, with the quilting, it goes straight down. And then you come down a little bit, honey. And then it comes across like this. Now this is, someone asked about this too. This was pieced this is pieced this is pieced and then this is applique on and then this is applique on just like on this little guy um this is oh they were all applique all of them were applique one 
first this one. Thank you, honey. This one, this one, this one, this. Oh, yeah. And then there's a there's a reason that this is back here. Um, turn it around, John. What happened was when I was straight line quilting, this line here started getting really weird. And I don't know why. And so I just took a tuck before I sewed uh, this on. And if you turn it around, John, that's why this is on because I had to hide the tuck. So, um, yeah. So the first thing she talked about, Jackie, was just straight line quilting out and with your walking foot and all that. And I'm going to get to that in a little bit, okay? But then she said, you know, there's other things you can do that are very repetitive and soothing and read like safe straight line quilting. On your machine, you probably have a serpentine stitch like this. So she just opened it up lengthwise, widthwise. And so this is that quilt. You can see I do the serpentine in the background and then I did on the little squares straight line quilting. One, This is so weird. One of the things in um, my quilting genre is I like to mix soft curved lines with geometric lines. And again, on this one, I, I did the flange with a little bit of color in it. I mean, that to me, that just adds a whole lot, okay? So you've just looked at quilts where straight line, straight line. Here comes a quilt that I, is based on an antique quilt, and I absolutely adore this quilt, and you're probably, a lot of you are familiar with it. It's a quilt, um, it's called Universe 2. Julie, I'm gonna go this way, honey. Julie uh, Silber owns Universe 1. It's a quilt that was made in the 1800s. And this one, I have the curvy stuff in the center. Gotta come in more, babes. And then I've got it going in on, on an angle. Now, the problem with going on an angle is that this quilt ended up like a potato chip of those ones with the wavy edges, you know? And I couldn't block it out. And I think it's because the bias got, um, got pushed. The other thing I didn't know, and I learned this from Jackie after, is you divide and conquer. You don't just start going like this. You do a section, you do like this, and then you do this, and then you do this, then you go back, and then you go in between those, etc. So the fate of this quilt was this. I bound it, and I tried to block it, wouldn't work, so I just cut off the binding, just cut it off, and I faced it. But before I faced it, I actually did a gathering stitch. Uh, I can't even tell you where, but I did a gathering stitches along the edge so I could make it square. So that's the dirty little secret behind that particular quilt. Thanks, John. Okay, this next quilt, you, you wouldn't even know I made this quilt. Um, it does not have my name written on it. Uh, it was started in a Rosalie Days class. It took me a year to figure out how to put this together. Um, is that one right? Yeah, that's right. Whoop, there it goes, spools of thread. Um, so I'm going to really get out of the way here. So John, move. Perfect. So, ah, let me get, let me get this way over here. So on this quilt, I used very many, a ton of different techniques. Um, there is foundation paper piecing. I can't. I don't remember where, um, there's applique and there's regular piecing. And then I'm gonna put my finger right here, John, move in, put your nose out right here, keep going. I don't know if you can see this, but I did straight line quilting and then I went in and I did um, matchstick quilting, picking up the shapes of the triangles again. So I absolutely, I'm afraid you're gonna knock the camera over, got it? Yeah, there, yeah, you got it, okay? So that is actually what I'm doing on the quilt I'm working with right now. I did straight line quilting, and then I went and I'm adding matchstick quilting with certain shapes, and it's it's fun. I do all of the straight line, and then I go in and add the extra. Okay, then the next one is a version of straight line quilting, and um, it's based on the class I took from Jean Wells, but I just, I just stay within the shapes. Come on in here a little bit, please. Um, I stay within the shapes, but then I organically 
follow with the lines. I do use my walking foot for this. I can do that, okay? And I do a thread change, a color change for every single area. I, I want it to all match, which is yet a reason you need to stash up good threads. All right, and then last but not least is this quilt that I also did in Rosalie Dace's class. I'm a devotee of hers. Um, and you can see this one has straight line quilting going in all different directions. And I'll show you how to do that at the end of everything. So John, let's all give him a hand. Great job, thank you so much. Oh wait, one more, sorry, you're not off the hook. I've even used straight line quilting for super um, traditional, super, super traditional quilts. And this is a question about how the size of each block, I made a mistake. Ooh, oh, I'll try and get back to that. Okay, so this is the quilt. I, do we have this pattern at TQS? I think we do sell it. I think we do. It was based on a bundle by Edita, and um, I just did straight line quilting going down, and I think that's kind of unusual on a traditional quilt. And then I did the crazy um, serpentine in the background there. So don't think you have to be working on a modern quilt. <laughs> a modern quilt to... Um, to do straight line quilting. Okay, my underwear's hanging out. All right, so first of all, let's talk a little bit about how I mark my quilt, okay? Um, I love this ruler. It's a two and a half inch wide ruler. And um, I take, like I can see it, but you can't, okay? This is just a regular ruler. And you know, I'll switch over to down here now. Here we go. And um, what I'll do is I will, okay, this is tough because I'm a lefty. I will mark it. I wonder if I could do right-handed. Woo! And then I would go stitch this, okay? Then I would go, this is, t uh, I would go to one and a half. And then I would stitch it, okay? I do use this pen, and I want to talk a little bit about it. Um, they're not here off the boat yet, but they are um, a little bit different than the blue disappearing ink pen that we are also familiar with. This is purple. It will stay on for about 72 hours, um, give or take, because I don't know what your climate is. But more importantly than that is that I can iron I can put the iron on this and it will not be a permanent mark. You know how that is, right? Um, if you want to get rid of this before 72 hours, you have a couple options. You can use water or on the other end, let's just say I made a mistake. We have this um, stuff that will erase it, okay? So like I didn't think I would really use that honestly. I started making little mistakes and it was a good way to correct it. So here's something else I want to share when you are straight line quilting is you are going to be going to your iron periodically um, because what happens is that um, it gets, there we go, it can get like this and you've got to get that ironed out and it's more pronounced when you are working on a diagonal. I actually, on this one, I took that and then I put some uh, Terial Magic on it or super high or super spray starch when I was ironing it and that helped get rid of that weirdness, okay? So um, before we actually get to straight line with your walking foot, I wanna talk a little bit about um, you, what your setup needs to be, okay? Um, you, you need to, if you're gonna do ruler work, go back down here please. I love it that it's called the switcher. You're not going to use your regular, you're not going to use a regular ruler because it's just not going to work. And there's a ton of different um, rulers out there that are meant for um, ruler work. You're going to have to have this sort of foot. And I'm pretty darn sure almost all machines have, you can buy these. Uh, they're not cheap, at least with Bernina, they're not cheap. But I love it because you can take your ruler then that is designed for straight line quilting 
and you can butt up against it and there you go. Um, this is the, our first one with Quilter Select and you can see here it's thicker. The holes aren't really to hold it like this. The holes are just to help you position and move it, etc. We chose the first one to be eight by two because not everybody has the luxury of having a big bed machine. These will work with um, um, domestic as well as long arm. And it has the magic potion on the back that keeps things from slipping. So the one quilt, oh, so let me show you this quilt. I could, I don't, I, it's not here. So this is a quilt. Oh, but I gotta go back to here. Um, come on, baby. Okay. This is a quilt that if I were using my walking foot, I would want to just cry because the way the lines are all going in different directions. This particular quilt, I actually machine quilted it. Then I added the little components on top and I machine quilted it like this. Okay, I took the pieced units. Oh, uh oh, let me get this here. I took the pieced units and I drew lines like this just randomly, okay? And then using my jazzy little foot and my ruler, I would just go around in those areas. This, what, so let's just do this one for fun. Okay, I'm gonna start. Uh, I'm gonna start up here. You know what, this is really bad, you guys. I should have practiced before I got on because it's been a little bit since I've done it this way. So I'm gonna butt this up to it. I'm going to, this is what I learned from long armors. Okay, I'm gonna go down. I'm gonna come up. I'm gonna pull up that bottom, that bottom um, bobbin thread. I'm gonna pull it out. I'm going to take a couple little stitches just to anchor it, okay? And then I'm going to move along the way. What's so great is that this ruler doesn't slip. So it's essentially like using a quilting, quilting mitt. I'm going super slow. Now when I get to the corner here, I'm going to stop. I've got two choices. I can butt the ruler this way, making sure that this all stays parallel, or I can butt it this way. I would rather be able to see, so I'm going to butt it this way, and I'm going to make sure this line is parallel to that line. I am addicted. Whoops. Oh, I gotta go a little bit more. That's right, I gotta go until this ring touches that mark. And of course, I would mark my quilt with something that, um, let me make sure this is good. I'm, I wanna do it on this side, I wanna be able to see. And I don't even know if that's appropriate or not, but that's what I wanna do. I'm making sure it's all running parallel there. And you could see what a pain in the butt it would be if I were using a walking foot because you would have to turn it and turn it and turn it. So how I end it is this, is um, I go a lot in one place, I go up, I pull out, I grab this, I go down in the same hole. Now I've pulled up my bobbin thread and then I can snip it and I've got a clean back. And then for the one that started, I can um, just go and snip that too. I like these little curved scissors so I don't make an uh-oh. Okay, so that's how, and this is really uncomfortable, you guys. I mean, having to work around and not see and all that. So let's just talk about a walking foot for straight line quilting. Good gas. Um, and this, I gotta tell you, having bifocals, oh sheesh, putting this on is a nightmare. Um, I, we have a safe in our house and it's on the floor and I can't get into it. Okay, 
get up there. Get up there. Where? Oh, I went in the hole. I should have some readers here is what I should have. Because that's got to go on the edge there. Okay, come on. There we go. I know none of you have problems with that. Get up there. There we go. Okay. Whew. Okay. So normally with straight line quilting, and what I did was I would well, I erase that one. Okay. I would go down, do my little magic trick, come up, pull that out, take a couple little stitches. Oops. Let me go backwards. I forgot to now I, anyways. Okay, and then I would go down. And I'm telling you, you guys, you think this is easy, but the truth of it is, you, um, the truth of it is, it can go wee wah, totally wee wah. And so I thought, well, wait a minute, if my ruler foot will work with, you know, this other foot, why can't it work with my walking foot? Why can't I use it? in my, this ruler in unison with my walking foot. And I can. And so not only do I have the lines, I also have this to butt up against. So on my machine right here, there's a little piece that sticks out and it has a little bit of a ridge here on my walking foot. I will just butt up to this. I'll make sure, again, I erase this line. Um, I will make sure that this, this edge is parallel to this line and then I just ride on the edge of my walking foot. I absolutely love it. And then what you can do is you can also use the markings on here to move along the way if you so wish. So um, that's basically the, the thing. Number one, uh, straight line quilting is not fast. Um, I actually have my machine on about um, maybe 60% speed. When I get going too fast, I go cuckoo or, um, it, or the thread breaks or whatever. So I just take it easy. Um, but now I want to talk about one other way to do this straight line quilting. All right. So here is another quilt that I did in Rosalie Dace's class. Oh my gosh. And um, if you look at it carefully, you can see that it's straight line quilting, but things are going in different directions. The lines are going in different directions. So here's another one too. This is uh, Libby's quilt. I made it when Libby was so, so sick. And um, I could feel her coming through my hands. I think I've shared this story before. But again, like the gray quilt, the lines are going in all different directions. So here's how I do that. What I do is I put the quilt on the wall once it's been basted and I put blue tape on it. And then I will sew those blue lines or, you know, I will sew those lines and then I will go in and I will do those areas in different directions. It's a really nice result and I've yet to goof up a quilt doing it this way. I, I adore it. I absolutely adore that look. And so that goes bye-bye. This goes bye-bye and that goes bye-bye. Um, so, okay, feed dogs. That's an interesting question. Um, I learned this from Jean Wells. When you're say doing free motion quilting, you can leave your feed dogs up but I, I always leave mine up because it just kind of gives a little bit of a safety belt, just a little bit. Uh, and again, I'm not going like a speed demon either. I'm taking it easy. So I do leave my feed dogs up, but I'm going to tell you this right now, people, you do what works for you. You don't do what works for me. You do what works for you for you. Okay. I learned about using painter's tape from Jackie Geary. I'm telling you guys, she, she is amazing. She is absolutely amazing. Feed dogs down with ruler foot. Feed dogs up with walking foot. Okay. I'm sorry I have to ask, but I have no idea how to fix my problem with my last four blocks. What blocks? Okay. So, Debbie, I'm, I'm talking to you now. Um, I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about. 
So let me scroll up a little bit. Um, so can you use that ruler with a walking? So you can. Well, I, I know I can with my Bernina use it with a walking foot. Um, thank you, Rondi. Let's see. I struggle with my walking foot too. I'm telling you right now, I've got to get like readers. Um, my mom always taught me too of um, as soon as you get bifocals, these are bifocals, whatever you're going down the stairs, man, you look down. You don't, and she said, Alex, and she never really gave me that much advice growing up. She said, I'm telling you something real here. You look down. Um, um, pointing out the speed you are going, about three quarters, maybe 60%. Okay, says so quilter select, have any other quilting rulers? Curvy, wave, or whatever. Okay. Um, I do not use 505 based anymore because it wrecked a quilt. I shouldn't have said a name. I don't use spray based anymore because honestly, I don't know what I had. It wrecked a quilt of mine by bleeding through the top. And so I use uh, Free Fuse, which is a powder by Quilter Select. Do you sew in the same direction for every row? No, you don't. I mean, yes, you can. I asked Jackie that. She's she's kind of my mentor in this whole thing. Um, yeah, you can, but you are gonna go and press and press and press and press, which is why this pin is so stinking valuable because you're not gonna set it into your top. Disclaimer, always test your fabric with anything with an ink or it's anything with a color. I don't care what, always test it. Um, that pin is, uh, we will have those pins in TQS at the quilt, sh at the quilt show. Any quilter select dealer will be getting these pins. They're literally on a slow boat from somebody. And Kay Brooks said, um, that she thinks they'll be shipping out early May. So stay tuned with that. Open your newsletter. Um, I left handed as well. Quilting has definitely taught me to use my right hand as well. You know, um, it, the, the pin is called, uh, Quilter Select Self Erase Marker. All right. Let's see. Okay. The quilt show. Yes, we do have that Sequoia Sampler Remix, um, quilt pattern for sale. It was really fun. Really fun. Um, please forgive me, but your quilt should not be folded in half and then quarters. I know. I know. It's just the only place I have to store them, but I have no problems ironing my quilts. I do it all the time. Um, I, we don't live in a McMansion and I don't have a lot of space. So yeah, they do. But I did learn this from somebody and I, my quilts are in there and I cram them in. I mean, um, if you have to fold your quilts, fold them horizontally, especially if they're going to be on a wall, because then that, that will, that will hang down. We have on the quilt show shown ways to do triangles and stuff like that. Um, let me go down and see if that one gal answered that question. Can we order them now? No, you can't order them now. Um, I haven't ventured all the different avenues. I'm telling you straight line is fun. It's fun, fun, fun. Um, do I cut the thread at each end or travel from row to row? You know, you're on that, you're going to have to just figure out what works for you. If I can easily travel and make it nice and neat and tidy, I will do that. Yes, I will. But um, a lot of times my thread involves thread change and all that. Okay. Okay, here's Margo. God, I love you, Margo. To attach the walking foot, use your knee lifter, right? Raise a presser foot as high as it'll go. It will make attaching much easier. Oh, good grief. Um, um, I think, I think we're getting there, you guys. I don't know about the last four blocks. I'm sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. If you could privately email me, um, I, I can maybe try and help you out, but Debbie, I would need to see a picture of what you're doing. If you guys go to thequiltshow.com and you write to contact us, um, Brandy will get it to me. It's just not an issue. Also, uh, right now we've got the 1995 special going on for six months. Um, if you're not a member, it's the best money you can spend for your quilting education. I mean, the quilts, the shows are professionally shot. Um, our, our editor works for Oprah, our producer freelances for Oprah, um, and we are on it. And um, it's going to be interesting to see what the next couple months 
hold because um, we're supposed to be taping early June. I don't know. So we're we're getting we're getting um, we're getting creative on how we can bring fresh content to you that is much more professional than this stuff I'm showing you here. Although there is something funny about this, I think. So, um, anyways, so oh, let's see. I just oh, Debbie answered me. Debbie, where are you? Okay, Alex, thank you so much. Okay, so you'll you'll privately ear email. And yes, Rondi, there are going to be no, more rulers. Um, have you used the BSR for straight line quilting? Okay, Bonnie, I've never bonded with the BSR um, because I had to learn without it. But I will tell you on the Q24, um, or is it the Q20? Anyways, the sit down, the big Bernina one, the, not, not this one. Well, it has it too, but the sit down one, the one I'm eyeballing, um, it has a double stitch regulator. There is zero learning curve. You just sit down and it happens like magic. So um, if you use a BSR, I mean, why not, right? Right? So anyways, you guys, I just help spread the word on this, all right? Because this is just, here we go, Rose. Right on, sister. Just made my first quilt with straight line quilting. I'm hooked and I've been quilting a while. Exactly, absolutely exactly. And if you have a suggestions for little topics, um, somebody suggested big big stitch. I've never done that, so I, 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 I will only share with what I know. And this is what I know, is I don't know a lot. Um, and I also know of what I know, somebody over there is gonna tell you a different way to do it. That's how vast our quilting community is. And that's why you gotta do what works for you. You watch, you watch, you see, and then apply it to your situation. So, um, hey, you guys, I want to thank you so much for spending your time with me this morning. Um, I am going to do a Skype this uh, afternoon with, um, I'm not going to tell you, you're going to have to wait and see. Uh, she's somebody that I've wanted to get so badly on the show. And now that we'll be taping in Texas, I think that might just happen. Did I just say a uh, Sue Benner? Um, so um, thanks for spending time with us. I love suggestions. I, I love, I love, <laughs> I love hanging with you. Sparrow says hello. Oh, my baby. She's purring. Yep. Be kind to your pets, but more importantly, be kind to yourself. Thanks, guys.